you greetings from my local league, the St. Pete League of Women Voters, where I'm the membership chair. But um, officially, I'm here in my work capacity as the Reproductive Rights Program Director at Progress Florida. And tonight, we're going to be talking about self-managed abortion or using abortion pills to end one's own pregnancy and work that I'm doing in that regard. Honestly, um, you know, I, I work full time in the in the in the abortion rights movement, and it is uh, it can be a really, really challenging place to be because we have I really feel like we've suffered loss after loss, particularly here in Florida and in the South. And it's hard to uh, some days it could be hard to keep going. But knowing about abortion pills and knowing how Americans and Floridians are accessing these pills um, has really, really given me heart. And it's what lets me sleep at night. And it's it's made me very motivated to spread the word about about this um, this way of of um, ending a pregnancy. I want to uh, say that legally protecting myself and yourselves when you're talking about this is um, is is really really important. And so I'm not going to read a bunch of slides to you tonight, but this one's so important that I do want to read it right out loud verbatim. As part of our work to increase access to abortion, Progress Florida is committed to sharing evidence-based information that empowers people to choose to end their pregnancies outside a medical setting. However, please be aware that statements expressed by team members of Progress Florida during this event constitute neither medical nor legal advice. So what, do I, what am I talking about when I'm talking about self-managed abortion? What I'm talking about tonight when I use that term is, um, is, is when someone obtains and takes pills to end their pregnancy on their own without interacting with the traditional American medical system. That is, they do not turn to an American healthcare practitioner, an abortion provider, a health, women's health clinic to get those pills, and they do it in their own home. And we at Progress Florida are very, very committed to getting the word out about this. Why? Because we know that self-managed abortion, abortion with pills is safe and effective. Both of the pills that are typically used in this regimen are on the list of essential medicines held by the World Health Organization. And these medicines are used in clinics and also by millions of people on their own around the world safely every single day. Abortion pills are very safe. They are safer than, say, Viagra and penicillin and even Tylenol. And abortion with these medicines is far safer than any of the unsafe methods that pe desperate people use when they're trying to end an unintended pregnancy. We do this because abortion pills are really awesome and everyone should know how they work. Information about abortion is part of basic se sexual health care, and anyone who can get pregnant should have access to the information that they need about birth control, about safe sex, about healthy sexuality, and about abortion, including abortion pills. And our goal is to share this information um, about how to use them so that this, this health information is more widely available. And um, needless to say, we do this because we trust women, we trust people, to, and we want to empower them with the information that they need. And we're doing this because Roe v. Way is, is gone um, and people need this information more than ever. However, the fact is we were already in an abortion access crisis in this country and in this state even before Roe fell. And we are doing this because abortion opponents can't stop abortion, no matter who they throw in jail, no matter what restrictions they pass, people are still going to need to end an unintended pregnancies, and we want to make sure they know how to do it safely. So you, you may be wondering, well, why would someone self-manage an abortion? Why would they get pills out on their own and take them? There are actually quite a few reasons. The first is that they can't afford an in-clinic in abortion. You all may know that abortions at, at Florida providers, I mean, probably the lowest cost 
if, if someone was to go into a clinic would be around $600, maybe, I mean, typically more than that. And it could be up to, I mean, depending on complications and how far along the person is, it could be thousands of dollars. And folks who don't have insurance or who use Medicaid as their insurance are not going to have coverage um, that way. And some insurers don't cover abortion. So uh, you, people have to have money in their pocket ready to pay and they can't afford it. So they turn to less expensive abortion options, getting the abortion pills outside of the system. Other things are like that there's the clinics, clinic is closed. You all may know, read the Pensacola clinic closed. There is no there is no clinic in Western, um, Western, West, the Western part of the panhandle. Fact is 60% of our counties don't have an abortion provider anyway. Um, also restrictive laws, things like the 24 hour waiting period where two visits are required, but, but it make it too complicated for people who need to travel, you know, to a, one of our metropolitan centers for care. Also, some people choose it because they like the privacy. They don't want people to be involved with their uh, with their their abortion and they just really want that other people prefer to have their abortion at home because they want their they're kind of controlling about themselves and they feel like they have the power they're taking the pill on their their own terms the first one and they're managing the next pills that they take they um, like being in their comfortable home environment some people do it because they're afraid of engaging with the healthcare system, maybe because of their immigration status or because of they don't speak English or because they are um, non-binary or present as male, but still are pregnant and um, they're nervous about going to a women's health center. And then the last reason I'd say is people being afraid of going through the gauntlet of protesters or being seen going into an abortion provider if they're in a smaller community or any kind of stigma that would be attached if someone saw them. So those are some of the reasons people would choose self-managed abortion. These pills have been thoroughly researched by the World Health Organization for safety and by dozens of organizations around the globe. They're offered by mainstream medical services everywhere and they've been FDA approved for use here more, for more than two decades. But because they're about abortion, politicians can't help but interfere. And American health care providers in many states have been severely restricted from offering any kind of abortion care now, as you know. And as a result, people in need of abortion are now accessing these medications in creative ways, which we're gonna be talking about here in a little bit. Um, the risks of ending a pregnancy with abortion pills are the same as when a person has a natural miscarriage. And I want to remind you that that happens in about 15 to 20% of all pregnancies. It's the same. The abortion pills bring on a miscarriage. Same symptoms, same treatment. It's the same. The American Bar Association, National Lawyers Guild, American Medical Association, and ACOG, they've all passed resolutions opposing any criminalization of self-managed abortion. But they, like all abortion rights activists, are watching closely at how things play out in states where abortion is already banned or it's about to be banned. And just to see how aggressively and far, how far anti-abortion politicians are going to go. So we are definitely um, watching that. Is how, what about criminalization of it in the states? All right, so there are three, the three on the, on the left side of the slide, you will see the three states where legislators, legislatures have criminalized abortion, Nevada, Oklahoma, and criminalized self-managed abortion, sorry, uh, Nevada, Oklahoma, and South Carolina. In these states, it's explicitly illegal to manage one's own abortion. However, even in states where and there is no explicit law, women have been arrested, and the orange states on the map represent those. And let me accentuate that actually, even though it looks kind of dramatic, it's not as many people being prosecuted as you might fear. 
Um, there have been 61 incidents total in the last several decades. So 61 total. In the meantime, literally hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people have self-managed their abortions without incident. But um, the risk of an, an aggressive anti-abortion local prosecutor going after a person due to a pregnancy outcome can't be ignored. And it did happen in Florida, as you can see, we're in orange state here on the map. It was in the early 90, 1990s, a uh, pregnant 19 year old actually shot herself with a gun in the abdomen to try to end the pregnancy. And a friend of hers told a newspaper reporter that she had tried to get an abortion at a local clinic, but she could she didn't have the money. And so she felt like she didn't have an, another option. The local prosecutor actually charged her with third degree manslaughter or third degree murder and manslaughter and um and she was indicted and her case was appealed up to the state supreme court and in 1997 they dismissed the case and that was actually that is the legal precedent that precludes someone to this day in florida from being prosecuted in the death of their own fetus and there haven't been other indictments um, of self-managed abortion since then still this is a whole new world, right? This is a DeSantis um, governed state with, with his appointees packing our courts. So we, and prosecutors in some ways. So we cannot pretend that legal risks don't exist now. And we know that criminalization in general falls heaviest on people who are already marginalized and over-policed. And so particular risk among our immigrant popu population, among our Latina population, and among our Black population. So you might wonder, okay, Amy, you're here talking about this openly. Aren't you afraid that you're gonna get caught up and be accused of aiding and abetting abortion? Uh, or someone getting an abortion, aren't you afraid of, of you know, being arrested? And, and here's the thing. There's never a guarantee that someone won't get sued for something or accused of something. And I'm not going to, I don't want to minimize the potential legal risks associated with being involved with this movement. However, as long as it is, it is clear that the purpose of what I'm doing tonight and what you might be doing if, if, you're, if, you, if you talk with someone in the future about this topic is that I'm sharing information about how abortion pills work. I am not encouraging their use. And there's a fine line there. I am not pretending that I'm a medical doctor offering medical advice or opinion. I am just sharing information that is available. That's what I'm here to talk with you about tonight is information and communication. And I'm gonna talk about some communication strategies now that I use when I'm thinking about talking about self-managed abortion. Thanks to the First Amendment and Article 19 of the, of the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it is not a crime to share information, particularly, particularly information that is publicly available on websites like the World Health Organization and Women Help Women and PlanCPills.org and all kinds of other resources. However, it can be a crime to encourage or incite a person to perform a criminal or lawless act. That means that one has to be specific about the language that, we, that they use when they're talking about any aspect of self-managed abortion to ensure that nothing said can be criminalized. And how is this done? Well, primarily by not using the word, word you when discussing self-managed abortion, only use the third person. When the word you is used, I'm sorry, when the word you is replaced by an individual or a person or some similar phrase, it signifies that only information is being given and that the speaker is not advising the listener to act in any specific way. And how the listener then chooses to use that information that they've received is their decision. And if, if, the, if the talker has just objectively shared information, 
then whatever that listener does, it is not something that the talker can be responsible for. So some examples, it's critical never to say something like, you could get the pills yourself online or self-managed abortion is an option if you're less than 12 weeks along. Don't see hear that those words, you and your definitely a no-no. Instead, something like this could be said. More and more people are getting their abortion pills on their own and taking them at home. Or self-managed abortion is safe with the right information and support up to 12 weeks of pregnancy. See how the same information was conveyed, but not the word you. It totally, it, it is a legal protection. And this is the type of information that we cover in our, we have a two hour training that really digs in a lot more deeply into the whole self-managed abortion, abortion with pills um, movement and campaigns. And um, we have, we have some, we have one coming up and the kinds of things that we cover, that we go much more into depth than I am with you this evening. We cover like why, why information is needed, the diff, uh, the, what I have covered tonight, and also the difference between giving information and advice, but also a lot of specifics about how the medication works, the protocol that is involved with the different ways, the different, the two different protocols in using the medication, depending on what drugs people can access, um, precautions that people should know about before taking the pills, Physical, physical effects of taking the pills, knowing what to expect, when there's an emergency, how to, how to identify that, these kinds of things. And it is a two-hour training, um, but folks come out of it with you know, a, a lot stronger of a bedrock in, in confidence and knowing how to talk about it. And we also preview, we also give um, information on important resources. And I'm going to give you a preview of a couple of those right now. And the first is the free Repro Legal Helpline. And this is for folks who have questions about their legal risk, particularly people who are considering self-managed abortion or who have self-managed abortions. The, uh, the national law firm, If, When, How, which is um, their tagline is, it is lawyering for reproductive justice. They are the ones who manage this helpline. It's free and confidential and it can be accessed by phone or um, through a, a form on their website. And again, they provide legal information about or adv and advice about self-managed abortion as well as to young people who need to access abortion but cannot involve a parent in, in states like Florida, which require parental um, consent in order for a teenager to access the care. Um, we want people to have as much information that as they can so that they can make the decisions that are best for themselves. So um, if, when, how is amazing. We also, um, uh, during the SAS training, talk quite a bit about plancpill.org. And this is a website that is, um, it provides individualized state-by-state -state information on how to access abortion pills what types of telehealth are options, whether it is telehealth um, inside from an American doctor, which would be illegal in Florida, or telehealth with an international doctor who doesn't really care about Florida law at all. <laughs> and, also, um, and also internet drugstores and things like that where pills can be obtained without a prescription. And um, at plancpills.org, they offer a, on when, when folks put in their state, they get a bunch of different options and the kind of information that can be available would be um, whether a clinician is involved with the, in, uh, the transaction, how much the pills cost, how many days it would take the pills to arrive at an American address and other things like that. Now, y'all know that Floridians cannot receive abortion pills through the mail from an American doctor because Florida law requires that the uh, abortion be provided in person. They also require a two, two visits to that physician with a 24-hour rate. They require a forced ultrasound and that medically inaccurate state-produced information be offered to each patient. 
This is all a bunch of anti-abortion malarkey that's passed over the years. So um, what does Plan C offer to Floridians in that case? So the screenshot that you can see is, is a recent screenshot up from the Plan C website and um, where someone entered a, that they were from Florida. And you can see that this shows um, that person how they can get abortion pills by mail. And the first option you see there is aid access. And this is a Dutch medical practice that prescribes pills and has them shipped from ph pharmaceutical partners um, who they send this, the prescriptions to in India, sometimes China. And this is actually generally the highest rated online medical practice shipping uh, from outside the US to American addresses. And then uh, you can see online pharmacies is second, is the second resource. And um, these, these vendors are unregulated and they're generally more expensive than aid access, but they often can deliver more quickly. So um, it's just, it is an option. And then the third uh, where it says mail forwarding, this is a very creative approach. This is what people do, what Floridians do when they get an appointment with an, a, a telehealth doctor from an out-of-state clinic, still an American provider, but they use an out-of-state um, PO box. So they've set up this PO box in a state where abortion pills can be received legally, and then they set up a mail forwarding. So the pills are prescribed by a doctor in one state, shipped to a PO box in a state where abortion's legal, the postmaster has the order to forward the mail and that then it comes to Florida. Florida. So it's an interesting option. Can be very uh, fast, but the person has to have had time to set up that PO box and that mail forwarding service. Our next um, training is, is Monday, February 13th, and I'm gonna put, you can register, um, registration information is there on the slide, progressflorida.org slash SAS. SAS stands for Self-Managed Abortion Safe and Supported. And we'd love to have you. And if, um, if we usually offer a training once a month. So if that date and time doesn't work for you, you can check that website that's on the slide to find out about future trainings as, as time passes. I wanted to also mention that a really great way to get involved with all of these issues that we're gonna, that I've been talking about, that we we're talking about first and that we're gonna be talking about for the rest of the hour is to get involved with our state level, our league's state level reproductive health and um, justice action team. I'm put in chat the uh, form that folks can sign up if they want to get involved. We meet monthly. The co-chairs are Ginger Mundy and Stacy Croto, and they do a great job of leading our state league's effort on this and have been instrumental in getting it to be such a high priority for, and I'm talking about reproductive health in general, to be such a high priority for our state. And that's the end of my formal presentation. Um, but I did want to give a little update on something that's happening in Broward um, that's percolating that doesn't have to do with self-managed abortion, but I can do that after questions or, or however you all would like to proceed. I'm curious about the Broward. Okay. Oh, Sandy, you're on mute, just so you know. Yeah, I, th I thought we should wait and just have questions on this for now. Okay. Um, like for my, um, one question I have is, um, so I'm used to thinking of medication abortion as something related to going to a clinic or going to a doctor and then doing it in your home, but maybe under a doctor's supervision. What you're talking about here is completely self-managed. You're not getting the pills from any doctor, not even your internist, nothing. You're getting them from one of these outside sources. Um, so I'm assuming what we're thinking is down the road, we want to have everybody 
as many people as possible trained on this procedure because we feel that we're not going to be able to access perhaps medication abortion through the medical system. And we're kind of building up these side routes to be prepared for that eventuality. Would that be correct? For sure. Yes, <laughs> that is all correct. Long question, short answer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, does anyone have questions? I've got a couple, but some are really quick. Okay. Sure. So in general, is the abortion pill not covered by insurance? No, it is. It is definitely covered by many private insurance companies. Okay. But not all. Okay. Not all um, and not Medicaid. Okay. Um, what is the difference in the plan B versus the plan C pill? Excellent question. They are entirely, entirely different pharmaceuticals. Plan B is a trade name for, uh, so it's just one, one brand of emergency contraception. And that is basically a high dose birth control pill that can be safely taken up to five days after unprotected sex to prevent a pregnancy. So it is birth control. Now I will mention, because I always feel compelled to do this, that for a person who weighs more than 165 pounds, um, the longer of the weight, the weight, the less effective it is. So if someone is heavier than 165, it's important to get that, those pills, um, uh, like the next day, um, right. there are. There are other forms of emergency <clears throat> contraception too, um, like getting an IUD inserted, for example, is a really, really effective um, method of, of post-coital birth control. But then plan C, which is met abortion pills, uh, you know, it ends a pregnancy. It ends a pregnancy. It is abortion. Okay. Um, what, what would someone do in a position where you went to your doctor, found out you were pregnant. Your doctor now knows you're pregnant. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm in, in Florida or a state like Florida. All of a sudden you come back and you're not pregnant. What do you tell the doctor? People who um, end their own pregnancies, there is no, there is no reason to um, disclose the types of medication they took or their actions. Um, if there is need to inform a physician, a, a healthcare provider, um, most people would say they had a miscarriage. No, all people would say they had a miscarriage if they're interested in protecting themselves and their physician. And my so understanding not, is you can't tell, even if you go to an emergency room, they can't tell. If you tell them you have a miscarriage and you're having the medication abortion, they can't tell. You can just- there is no, Yes, that is absolutely correct. There is no blood test or urine test that can pick up these drugs. And, and, um, and during our- full, full scale training. We go over why that is and that kind of thing. Okay. Um, how, I, I know that, that, that a lot of people use these online pharmacies for a lot of things. How do you know that what you're getting from China or whatever is safe, or even the, the group you, you mentioned aid, AIDS, aid, aid access, aid access. <laughs> I just put that um, website in uh, chat just so that everyone that have it handy. And um, I also, aid access is the European one. And I'm also putting plancpills.org, plancpills.org. Oops, sorry, I spelled that wrong. Plancpills.org, not pill, pills. Um, plancpills.org is run by the National Women's Health Coalition, I think it's called. And they are 100% committed to making sure that Americans have the information they need um, to make good choices about ordering these drugs. And they have ordered dozens and dozens of, of drugs from all these vendors, and they put it through quality control tests to see how, how effective the message is, how the medicine is, how safe it is, um, was it expired, how long did it get take to get to them, all of that kind of stuff. And that their guide, their online guide, actually provides those kind of rankings. Um, by and large, they have gotten good medicine almost all the time. So um, I personally, um, 
people who've had the most success have used um, vendors that are listed with plancpills.org. Thank you. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. Any other questions, anybody? No? Oh, Karen? Hi. So I guess that if you, someone needed to go to plancpills.org, that they tell you what to purchase. I mean, how, how would somebody know what they're ordering? Because I think it's two different kinds, correct? Right. Um, that is correct. Karen makes a good point that there are two different protocols, both um, lots of information on the World Health Organization website about each protocol. One uses only misoprostol pills and the other, which is a slightly more effective, uses a combination of mifepristone and misoprostol. And mifepristone is RU486. I'm sure you all remember when, when that came out of France like 25 years ago and then was FDA approved. Um, so the, que uh, the question was, how do people know what protocol to order and how many pills, how many don't get? And when, um, when interfacing with any of these websites, the directions come with the pills, the, the pills are ordered as an abortion pill packet. And so they come with the right amount and they come with instructions. Still yet, we believe, we who are involved with the, with this SAS campaign, we believe that the more of us community members who have the information about the instructions and sort of have that, have the resources at our fingertips to be able to offer support, the better it will be. Thank you. Can people call like Plan C or something if they're during it and they don't know, maybe I got my bleeding too much or... Is there somewhere they can call that's not a in the medical community? Absolutely. There is a confidential, um, a co see, all of you all are so savvy. You've got to take the full training. You all will love it. Let <laughs> me get it. Let me get the, um, it's called the miscarriage and abortion hotline, MNA, MNA, MNA hotline. Let me just make sure that I have, I want to get you the right address. M and A hotline. Abortion. miscarriage and abortion hotline. I'm putting it in chat. This is an amazing resource. They have clinicians um, there. Like it's like 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. in all time zones in the United States. And they speak English, Spanish, Mandarin, and Portuguese, I think, like four languages. And um, the, you, if, if you follow the link to that website, you, you'll see their toll-free number and think they can, that you folks can also text them so they can, and, and it, it is, um, a very secure line. <laughs> One more when ordering this, I mean, is it, is it financially inexpensive and how's it going to show up on someone's credit card? The, um, Actually, affordability is one of the reasons that some folks do it. Some folks choose it because, I mean, they might have a Planned Parenthood right around the corner or an independent provider in their town, but they'll choose this because it's, it, 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 is, it is so much less expensive. And um, what was your second question? How does it show up on your credit card? And can, oh, you be, right. can you be arrested? because you bought it, even if it didn't come to your home? I don't know the answer to that, but knowing these vendors and they, they, and they know the risk that folks are taking, I, I would, I'm sure that they have thought this through, but I, I really don't know for sure. So I shouldn't have said anything. It's a good, it's a good point. And it's something that uh, someone should ask when they're interfacing with the vendor, right? Karen? So I guess in Florida, where I am, um, this, uh, uh, this at home process with the pills would be illegal because I think the way the law stands in Florida is that you have to be with a healthcare provider. Well, the law is really directed at the providers, not at the people. Mm -hmm. the, the law says that providers may not offer care 
may not offer care unless, you know, the, they cannot do it via telehealth. They, they cannot mail it because the law requires that the doctor provide the care in person with all those other things attached, like the 24 hour two visits and all of that. So there's no law that explicitly says people cannot manage their own abortions. Okay. Do, you, do you get that, that nuance? Yeah. I just don't tell the legislature, Amy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I mean, it has been specifically criminalized in three states that we saw yeah. on our earlier slide. And further, you know, there's no, we can't deny that some local anti-abortion prosecutor who wants to make a name for themselves won't won't go after a woman who has come to the emergency room and admitted to a nurse, an anti-abortion nurse, that she took Miffy. And then that nurse calls the police department because they have a wrong opinion of what the law says. And then the police get involved and then the local prosecutor gets very excited because he gets his name in the paper. So, you know, we can't we can't say that would never happen. It has not happened, though. OK, anybody else um, have a question? 